Oh, my friends, the deck is stacked against us. You walk around any grocery store and I'm telling you 95% of the products are designed to make you fat, sick, and nearly dead. But not dead for sure, because if that's the case, there's no money in it for the corporations. I joke not. But here's the deal. We're gonna walk around today and show you foods that you think might be healthy, but they're not. They're filled with ingredients that truly are detrimental to your health, but like we always do on my channel, I'll show you the better for you options, because it's not easy. I walk around the grocery store all the time, and I see people staring at the wall of cereals and breads and pasta sauces, and it's confusing, and they do that on purpose. So, less talking, more shopping. Let's walk around the store and do our thing. This one is Misleading Marketing 101. If you eat products like Stevia, or Truvia or sugar alternatives, be careful because on the face of it, it should be good. A lot of people are swapping out cane sugar and stuff like that with zero calorie diabetic friendly sweeteners. But I ask you this, my friends, if you're buying something called Stevia in the raw to put in your cup of joe, that looks like a pretty good latte, I'm not gonna lie. Would you expect the first ingredient bum, ba, da, ba, to be dextrose, AKA sugar, and then Stevia? And because one serving is a scant one gram, which is tiny, they can say that it has less than one gram of added sugar per serving. Well, a gram is literally a quarter of a teaspoon of sugar. Of course, you're gonna say it's under one per serving because there's one gram per serving, but the first ingredient is sugar and then stevia. When you're trying to avoid sugar, what the what? Don't fall for that trap, my friend. So that's a hard no dog. This one here, stevia leaf. Okay, this is a look. Oh, he fumbles. He fumbles. Hold on a second. This one here says stevia leaf. And it doesn't have the dextrose, but the first ingredient is erythritol, the sugar alcohol, then stevia, then natural flavors. And the same is true for whole earth. The first ingredient is erythritol, then natural flavors. There's nothing wrong with erythritol per se, but when you're advertising this as a stevia product and putting erythritol the sugar alcohol first that's misleading and then adding natural flavors which as you know is the biggest lie in the grocery store not cool at all i mean listen i use erythritol in my couple couple of my products the um keto lemonades and the keto hot cocos just a little bit i'm fine with it but some people can have issues with their gut with it and when you're advertising a process a product as stevia and then using erythritol let alone as the main ingredient shame 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 so put those back look for ones that are pure stevia and something like this this is organic sweetener and i checked the ingredients earlier it's just the stevia i'm okay with the organic non-gmo citric acid there but a lot of these will have natural flavors in them too just be careful because you think you're buying pure stevia and it ain't Oh my gosh, the second you walk into the bread aisle, the smell is intoxicating. And it reminds me of back in the day, my parents would take my brother and I to the Wonder Bread factory in Chicagoland, and it smelled fantastic. But this is not the kind of bread you want to get. But the reason why I came over here, a lot of people know if they eat bread, they want whole grains. Why? Because whole grains are a complex carbohydrate. They have more fiber. They digest slower. They don't spike your blood sugar as much versus regular simple grains. But it is very, very misleading because if you pick up something like this, it says whole wheat, 100%. But if you read the ingredients right here, yes, whole wheat's at the top. Forget about the GMO soybean oil for a second. But in the middle, there's also wheat flour. So yes, the predominant grain is whole wheat, but then they're filling it with a wheat flour. The difference between whole wheat and wheat flour is a wheat flour has been processed. You got rid of that fiber and that bran and all the good stuff, and you just have the simple carbohydrate. Regular wheat flour is to be avoided. And so it's something like this that is very misleading. Even when you pick up something that looks like it's gonna be Bobby approved, organic and whole grain, organic in my opinion is a must for whole grains because of glyphosate, Look at this. Yes, it does have the whole wheat flour, but it also has soybean oil and canola oil and natural flavors. So you're taking something that could have been great. You're the best. Oh, I'm, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And I learned so much from you. And I'm a Costco shopper. Oh, yeah, I'm a Costco <laughs> shopper too, yeah. <laughs> nice. She recognized my, you recognize my voice. I hear that from aisles over sometimes, that people recognize my voice. You really so educational. You thank you. I try. Well, keep the good work. <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate the love. <laughs> Thank, 
She basically summarized my video right now. She said, everything in the aisles is geared to make you fat and sick and overweight and all that stuff. So I was saying this could have been something that was good, but they made it unhealthy, luckily. And I was just telling her, they have the good bread here. Dave's Killer Bread is all whole, whole grains. This one has a little too much sugar for me. I mean, five grams per slice is too much, but it's all whole grains and seeds. But they have this one, the one gram of sugar power seed organic, loaded with nothing but whole organic grains, nuts, and seeds. This is what you want because it's truly whole grain. The other ones are not whole grains. They're blended in with simple carbohydrates, cruddy oils, and excessive sugar. I wanna take a super quick break from the video to show you something that is truly good. If I reach into my back pocket, it's this, the Seed Probiotic. They're a longtime supporter of the channel, but if you followed along on our recent journeys to Italy and Greece, you saw that this really came in handy specifically for Desi and Rose. And Desi did a whole story about it, that she was eating foods she normally doesn't eat. I mean, we, of course we did. We were in Italy eating pasta and Greece eating uh, spina colpita and a sweet version of spina colpita called bugazza, which is amazing, made with phyllo dough. But Desi was taking this as she always does. And she noticed it really helped her stay more regular. And in the past, when she would eat that amount of gluten, she would feel really bad and be bogged down. She had no issues with the seed probiotic. And Rose takes the pediatric version of that. And she was very regular and had great bowel movements the whole trip long. And the truth is most probiotics aren't worth the money. They never make it to your colon. They die in your stomach acid. Seed makes it to your colon, both the kids and the adults ones. Now listen, if you're in the market for a probiotic or you're thinking about taking one, Seed is where it's at. Use my link down below. You get 15% off your first month supply, free shipping. They also ship all around the world for a flat rate and it's 30 days risk free. So for the adults, for the kids, you can't go wrong. Check my link out. Seed is the bomb. I have not eaten farm raised salmon in quite some time. And the reason why is because it's just harder and harder to source good quality farm raised salmon. And the truth about 99% of farm raised salmon is Number one, this is not, I repeat, not the color of farm-raised salmon. The color of farm-raised salmon is this. It's gray, it has no color. This color comes from the feed. They put beta carotene and other stuff in their feed to make it look more salmon-y because these fish live in pens or what they call aquacultures. Farm-raised salmon live in these pens and almost always they're overcrowded pens because they're overcrowded, disease break out like lice. They give antibiotics to the fish to fight the diseases. They give the feed, a lot of times the feed has corn and soy and animal byproduct, meaning poop. And GMO corn and soy, it's really, really bad. Some places do it right, but it's very hard to find. You're much better off getting wild caught salmon. I just pulled a bag out of the freezer section. Wild caught salmon. We have an abundance of it. This is from sockeye salmon from Alaska here. We have so much good wild caught salmon. And the truth is, nutritionally speaking, a wild caught beats the pants out of farm raised. I know why people like farm raised. It's way fattier. It's because they feed it like crazy. And because it's fattier, it's more forgiving from a culinary perspective. It doesn't dry out as easily, but I love this stuff. The best and fattiest wild salmon would be king salmon, but it's expensive. I buy the fillets at Whole Foods. I make salmon cakes out of coho salmon. They're fantastic, but I really don't think you should be eating farm raised anymore. Get the wild caught at Costco. The wild caught and farm raised are the same price right now. They're $9.99, it's a great deal. But if you saw a gray fish like that, you would think something is wrong. And in my opinion, there is something wrong with uh, farm raised. Go with wild caught, it's where it's at. Man, oh man, the Walmart cereal aisle is loaded with all the big hitters. But sometimes you think you're buying a healthy cereal, and in my opinion, it's not. So I'm gonna start with this. Okay, Post Great Grains. It's made with, oh, it's, man, I'm having a fumbling issue today. <laughs> right in the heart of the football season. It's loaded with a lot of fruits, nuts, and whole grains. But this is interesting because when you look at the ingredients here, number one, uh, it is a whole grain. It's not organic, but that's fine for this case. There's sugar. Four grams of added sugar per three quarter cup is not bad for uh, cereal, to be honest. But there's expeller pressed canola oil. Canola oil is highly processed, highly inflammatory. And see that? 
BHT, look at the last ingredient, BHT added as a preservative to preserve freshness. BHT is a controversial preservative that is so controversial, it's banned in almost every other country besides the US, but Post still uses it for some reason. Hex to the no, put that back. Now, you reach for something like Kashi Go Rise, and you see the protein, and you see the massive amount of fiber, you think you're good to go. Super misleading. So, what's the first ingredient? Soy protein concentrate. Well, that's how they get 11 grams of protein. And yes, it is non-GMO soy, but what do we say about soy? Soy is the cheapest form of protein you can get. Well, that's why they use it, right? It's profits over people. Hey, must be the money. So it's soy, it's cheap. It's also high in omega-6s, which is inflammatory. So just a hideous source of protein. And then if we read on here, there's sugar to the tune of seven grams, almost two teaspoons, and they're using more soy flour. So you're getting a lot of that omega-6 soy flour. No to that. Uh, speaking of high quality protein, if you haven't tried my new protein smoothie powders, which are protein plus smoothie ingredients in the bag, go to shopflavecity.com. We have vanilla, we have chocolate peanut butter now, and pumpkin spice for the fall season. And it has a real pumpkin powder and real pumpkin spices. Shopflavecity.com has all the good stuff. So that's a hard, hard no on that. So what do you do? Well, best in class cereals would be something like Seven Sundays, really high quality. Ezekiel makes a sprouted grain cereal. I actually eat the Seven Sundays for dessert and I've been eating it while watching the new season of Lord of the Rings which is really good. Handmaid's Tale, kind of iffy, but if you're buying these cereals thinking they're uh, healthy, they're not. All right, family, that is it. Unfortunately, it is a sad state of affairs at the grocery store, and I see it on a daily basis because people are scanning like crazy with the Bobby approved app, and I see these products, and they're bad news. Like I said, they are designed to make you fat sick and nearly dead, uh, but that is it. I hope this video helped a lot. I have a ton more videos about food swaps you can do, other fake healthy foods, but from the grocery store, my second home, I leave you like I always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace. Later.